guys, I'm Anna, a clinical psychology doctoral intern. Today we're going to be talking about flirting. I remember I made a video a few months ago on the importance of keeping up with flirting in your long-term relationship, and there were a few comments saying, Anna, I don't even know how to flirt in general, and I'm single. So that's what we're talking about today. I feel like flirting is one of those behaviors that we all kind of have an inherent understanding of, but it's really difficult for us to define and operationalize. So in this video, I'm gonna do just that. I'm gonna try to define flirting as I see it and how to do it if this is something that you struggle with, either because of neurodivergence, social anxiety, social awkwardness, or anything else. I feel like flirting often involves these unspoken hints at attraction. You're basically hinting to the other person that you're attracted to them, but not saying it explicitly. This could look like a wink, a compliment, gently brushing your hand against someone when they're talking to you. This is why most people get upset when their partner flirts with someone else because they know their partner is essentially communicating to another person, I am attracted to you and I am expressing that. You know, it's one thing to be attracted to another person. Some people don't even experience that in monogamous relationships. And then it's even one step further to actually go ahead and communicate that to someone other than your partner. And that's also why flirting with your long-term partner is so important because you want to continuously communicate to them. I'm attracted to you. I want these sparks to fly. I'm passionate. I'm drawn to you. Hold you in positive regard, which sort of builds anticipation for physical intimacy and emotional intimacy with them. So that's one thing. Flirting is this uns spoken hint at attraction. Flirting is also a form of play. Now, if you remember my video on play from a year or so ago, play is when you do something for no other reason other than it's fun. No ulterior motive, no instrumental reason for it. Just this thing is fun. It's entertaining. I just want to do it. Like, dancing when nobody is watching. And it's really important not just for children to play, but also for adults to play because it is a form of exploring our environment and also just keeping a lighthearted attitude on life, not always being so serious. So like I said, flirting is an expression of attraction that is not followed up with an actual goal. You know, like you could be winking at someone, but you're not asking them out or asking them to move in with you or anything like that. You're just hinting at, I'm attracted to you. Because it has no end goal, it has no ulterior motive, you're simply flirting because it's fun. That is a form of play. Like, let's say that you and your partner work from home, you see each other in the kitchen during your breaks, and one of you says to the other, you look so cute. And it's not like intended to go anywhere. You're not making a move on them. You're just hinting, I'm attracted to you. We'll come back to this later. And flirting also often involves teasing because teasing essentially ties into the unspoken hints of attraction piece. The point of teasing someone is not to neg them or bring their self-esteem down, make them feel worse about themselves. That's abuse, that's not flirting. Instead, teasing is about poking fun at yourself, your own attraction to the other person. And sometimes that can involve making fun of the other person. But the crux of the joke is that you're making fun of how attracted you are to them. You know, like let's say that you and your partner are getting ready to go out on a date, your partner dressed up really cute, wearing beautiful dress, makeup, hair done, everything. If you look at your partner and you say to her, oh, are you sure you're gonna wear that? You look a little dressed down. The point of that joke is not to neg her, to make her feel insecure about what she decided to wear. The point of that is to make fun of how attracted to her you are. You're basically taking a paradoxical approach. You're saying, oh, I'm not attracted to you at all. And really what you mean is, I'm really attracted to you right now. You're going about it in a backwards way to sort of build tension and playful energy and leave things unspoken. It's more exciting to leave things unspoken than it is to flat out say it. Leaving your attraction implicit will build that tension, that back and forth game, that cat and mouse that people play of, are they drawn to me? Are they not? Do they want to ask me out? Are they not? Are they going to kiss me? Are they not? I don't know. It's sort of that intermittent reinforcement that makes it so exciting and makes it feel so much more rewarding when you finally do make a move on someone, when you finally move past flirting into asking them out or initiating intimacy, whatever it is. Like, I don't know how many of you guys have seen the new Little Mermaid, but the new version reminded me of the old version in the Kiss the Girl scene. Like, I remember even as a child watching the Kiss the Girl song 
and just feeling how much flirtatious energy was in that, how much like back and forth between like, oh, I want to kiss her, but I can't. I want to kiss her. Maybe I shouldn't. I want to kiss her. Does she want to reciprocate? It's really exciting to build that tension. And teasing someone is often about that unspoken hint of, I'm really attracted to you, but I'm not going to say it flat out. In fact, I might say the exact opposite, but I'm not making fun of you. I'm making fun of myself and how attracted to you I am. So if you want to flirt, take away any ulterior goals or motives. Don't give yourself a task. Don't say, I'm going to get this person's number. I'm going to get this person to commit to go on a date with me. No, leave all of that out of it. Just have fun. Just have a little play, have a little banter, try to make them laugh, indirectly hint at the fact that you're attracted to them, but let that tension build before you explicitly confirm it. But you can't force this, you know? This isn't like I can just give you a template, A, B, C, D, here's how you flirt. That's not gonna be very authentic, that's gonna weird people out. Instead of focusing on taking certain steps in a very, very manualized way, instead I would encourage you to focus on the values underlying what we talked about, the values of playfulness, traction, teasing, and a really good way to embody attitudes is to step into an archetype. A really good female archetype that embodies this attitude is the fairy, nymph, sylph, sprite archetype. She is part maiden and part femme fatale. So in an interaction, if you're trying to be more flirtatious, think about how you would act if you were this cute little forest nymph. A really good example from media is Lucy Westenra from Dracula 1992. That is one of my favorite movies, if not my favorite. I'm always stunned by how flirtatious and playful and feminine she is with everyone, even her friends. She brings this very seductive, innocent quality to her interaction. So that's a really good inspiration if you're trying to think of an archetype and someone who embodies it. A male archetype you could maybe step into is the jester, one of the typical Jungian archetypes. He's silly, he's teasing, he's playful, he makes people laugh, he's charismatic. You don't really know what he has under his sleeve, so he's a little bit unexpected and dangerous in that sense. So think about how a jester would act in such an interaction. I didn't reflect on a male character that embodies the jester, so if you have any ideas, put that in the comments down below. I hope this was helpful if you feel like you struggle with flirting, just to help you figure out what it is, what it involves, and how you could maybe step into those attitudes a little bit more. That's all I have for today. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you soon.